All right, fellas, it is Dr. Density reporting in here, the professor of mass. I'm about to do another bro science dismantle on Jeff Nippard's top ranked chest exercises based off of science, which includes how he feels about the particular exercise. That was the most feedback I got last time I did this. Let me give you guys just a little nitty gritty info on the full scoop here. Uh, I opened the YouTube this morning. I see this video. I say, oh, holy buckets. Are we going to go down the rabbit hole again? I say, nah, I'm going to stay away from this one. Because I don't want people to think that I'm, um, what is it, clinging to his nutsack. Okay, trying to uh, clout chase or whatever it is. Because, fellas, listen, I don't care about it. You know what I mean? Like, I ain't trying to, you know, utilize people's names and things of that sort for the views, okay? Um, but I've gotten a lot of comments today where people are saying, "Stick it, Ricky. You have to, you have to talk about it." And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, "No, nah, I don't think I will." Okay, I don't think I will. We'll see. And then I see the comments, and I open up the YouTube, and the videos there, and it's freaking. You know what I mean? If there was ever a sign that it was the right thing to do. It is this video popping up several times throughout the day, and you, the viewer, saying, Dick Delhagen, let's get it, okay? So I suppose, with that being said, guys, let me just say this first and foremost here. I basically had no problem making the critique on the back exercise video because I have girthy, voluptuous, wide bat wings, and nobody can dispute that, okay? A lot of people have been saying, Sticky Ricky, your chest is that of a 10-year-old boy, okay? And maybe the chest is my weakness, you know what I'm saying? I've benched 510 pounds. I've done dips with like damn near 300 pounds and stuff like that. So I've, I've done a lot of this stuff, but I'm, I'm freaking open. I'm an open book, okay? And I am, in all honesty, I'm going into this video with no judgment, um, an open mind. But with that being said, with comes an open mind will also come just a freaking open forum of discussion. And I will, before we even start the video, I probably, let me just say this, all right? Always watching um, the freaking training of all the horse cocks throughout the years and the decades, right? It seems like everyone does bench, so it must be a good exercise, right? I'm assuming he's not going to put it in the S tier though. I can guarantee it won't be in the S tier, even though it's most certainly an S tier exercise. Um, same with dumbbell bench. So like all the pros, all everybody, bench presses, dumbbell bench presses, it seems they do, all the pros, bodybuilders and stuff, they do like the hammer strength exercises too. I'm assuming he's, well actually I don't know. I'm gonna have an open mind. Um, and then like Arnold, Huge advocate on the dumbbell flies, which I'm assuming he's going to put in like the C tier probably. And uh, there's probably going to be some meme exercises he creates, like the half kneeling, twisting cable rotation will probably be S tier. But at the end of the day, like I am going into this, like no judgments. No, I'm not, I don't know it all. You know what I mean? I'm just a brother, right? We're all just brothers trying to get massive engorged chests, okay? Um, but in terms of the optimal movements, guys, I think I've made it crystal clear that I think that that, in general, is a load of horse crap. And I think it's doing what you are enthusiastic about. That's optimal for you. You know what I'm saying? One freaking trick doesn't stun everyone the same. You know what I'm saying? Some people get bamboozled by the freaking dumbbell press. Arnold got bamboozled by the flies, you know what I'm saying? Some people will do it and just snap their shit up or... So it's uh, different strokes for different folks, you know what I'm saying? So let's go into this and uh, let's, let's, see where, let's see what happens. What are the best and worst chest exercises for muscle growth? Well, for a chest movement to rank highly, it needs to tick three boxes. One, a big stretch with high tension. If it doesn't offer high tension in a deep stretch, I'm putting yeah, it in course. Here. No we already know this from the last one. It needs to feel it's got to feel good, Jeff. It should have a smooth resistance profile. Giving a good pump and a nice mind-muscle connection would be... I don't know if I agree with that, though. Does it have to feel good? I think it... it 
a lot of the a lot of the most effective exercises one would argue don't feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like freaking squats. Nobody is gonna say squats don't make you a powerhouse freak stud horse cock specimen. You know what I'm saying? Do those feel good? Well, over time, the better you get at them, they can feel better once you kind of get you know greasy with the movement, right? But especially when you're a beginner, they almost certainly don't feel good. A lot of people have the big puss pad on their back, on their spine, you know what I'm saying? The form feels really iffy, terrible on their back, terrible on their knees. Like, it doesn't feel good, right? Um, but it's a very effective exercise. You know what I mean? Same thing with bench. Like, I don't know what you're going to rank it, Jeff, but the bench is freaking S tier, brother. And a lot of people... Obviously, you got to be the guru of cues, you know what I'm saying? The shoulder blades back, elbows tucked and all that, big chest, and use your lats when you press and all that. Um, some the newbies will bench with, like, the flared elbows and, you know, but then someone argue, like Vince Geronda or whatever, the guillotine press, the ultimate chest developer. I can tell you right now the guillotine press does not feel good. And it will certainly snap your shit up, but... You know, a lot of the people that argue that the freaking olden day bodybuilders and the olden day lifters were superior. I mean, that's what they were pushing back then, you know? Nice two. Three, it needs to have a simple progression. If you can't progressively overload by adding weight or reps, that's not good. And after ranking 20 of the most popular movements from S for super to F for fail, at the end, I'll crown one exercise as the best of the chest, raising it to Best F of the plus. chest! One is the most inept for F minus, Jesus. Your head. All right, let's get the worst great. out of the way. The hex press. I'm not a big fan of these. First, you never get- Yeah, that's stupid. That seems like a meme to me, honestly. Uh, you get to squeeze the chest, work the inner chesticles. I feel like <clears throat> in today's day and age, it seems like that's kind of just a meme in general. Like, oh, I'm going to target the freaking clavicular head versus, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, pinpointing inner chest, outer chest, right? I don't think it really works that way, where you can't selectorize the freaking pinpoint where you want growth. You know what I mean? Like, back in the day, it's like, well, oh, put the slabs of clay on here. We got to put more slabs of clay on the inner chest. Or I think the other day, it's just genetics. You either screwed. Or you freaking, you know, hit the big lotto big bucks, you know? I don't think this bullshit press is going to give you deep engorged striated feathered pe pectoralis. Get a big stretch in your pecs because your arms never stretch out. They stay tucked in the whole time. And they don't offer maximum tension because your triceps will take over. And he's using the freaking 20s. I mean, I see Canadian though. Are those 44s? Are those kilos or are those in pounds? Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say those are in pounds. So regardless, I don't care what the four, you know, what I mean the stretch. I don't care what even the stretch, brother. The twenties ain't gonna do jack diddly. You know what I'm saying? There's no evidence that these target the inner pecs. In fact, I that's like doing the opposite of like Athlean X. You know how Athlean X was demonstrating the deadlift with his fake weights. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, and then it's like, well, he's not, he's not saying that that's what he can deadlift. He's just using the fake weights to show the form, but he's got such a huge ego that he has to show the form with way more weight than he can actually deadlift. But this is like, I don't know if this is like what he would really use. Would he really use the twenties or is he trying to be like, well, it's a technical execution video. So I'm not going to go heavy. Just show like. An adequate, what would an adequate set look like to you, Jeff? What weight would you use? I think they'd probably be worse for the inner pecs than a standard dumbbell press, since the inner pec fibers aren't getting as stretched here. The heck? Yeah, I think it's absolute bull. And that's why people are doing it. But I will say this. In my opinion, I don't feel like you're doing this to work your inner pecs. I feel like it's more of like a tricep. It's like an ultra close grip neutral press. So if you were going to do that, you'd do it for the freaking succulent ass tries, you know? Express is going in F tier. F tier? Is basically F. Brother, if this is an F minus, if this is higher than the last one, because this is bullshit, because you can't progress. What are you going to do? You know what I'm saying? What are you going to do? You're going to buy a freaking 55 pound plate, 65 pound plate, 70, and put two plates together? I mean, holy buckets, let me tell you. If I had three 45s I was sandwiching together, you bet your freaking buns I would be pushing as if my life depended on it because my life would depend on it to push those three plates together so they don't slip and skull crush my ass. 
So maybe it is a pretty good exercise. If you think about that, if it's do or die, then it's good. Hex press that feels even more awkward with even less overload potential. So it is hilarious that like, you do see people doing shit like this in the gym. And then I'll also see people doing that and they'll do like a front raise with it or something, which they're in their mind, they're probably thinking, oh, I'm working the upper pectoral clavicular head of my pecs. I want to work the upper inner. I guarantee that's the, you know, there's two different sides of the bro logic. You know what I'm saying? It's horse cock and rotund, you know, bulbous ass loads, right? And then there's the bro science of like upper clavicular head doing the freaking plate squeeze, you know? I don't identify with that side. It's also going in F tier. The dumbbell pullover Good. is a tricky one. Biomechanics now this one is a tricky one, Jack! Because Louis, big freaking Lou F, big freaking Louis F did these suckers. Arnold did these suckers. Every class, let me tell you something real fast. The Arnold program, in every phase of the Arnold program, it is indeed the dumbbell pull over. Now, a lot of times I'm like, damn, but I want to do the cable pullovers. You know what I'm saying? Cable. But it's like, that's not the way the pros, the golden freaking iconic pros, they want you to do the dumbbells. So I'm genuinely intrigued. You tell me. Plus that the pecs do help perform this movement alongside the lats and triceps. And when you look at the activation date. By the way, I sucked down six scoops of instant coffee before this. So it's starting to freaking kick in right now. If you're wondering why I'm starting to get elevated. That the pecs do activate on pullovers. The problem is, I simply don't feel my pecs when I do this movement. What? But it's not about you, Jeff! Okay? This guy is saying that the studies show that it does work the pecs, but he doesn't feel it. What are we, what kind of scientists are you, Jeff? Anyways, I don't care, but I'm just kind of flabbergasted. However, so more or less every client I've ever worked with says the same. You know, let's go back to this study. Let's go back to this study. Data. Data. Electromyographic activity during barbell pullover and straight arm. Freaking EMG activity, 30% of their body mass. Uh, Hex do activate on pull. Okay. Pullover. The frick is CPD? What does that stand for? Oh, frick. Where the hell is this study? I don't know. Listen, I'm just trying to find. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. What the frick? I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not going to bother reading this on camera. I'm boring you guys to tears. Um, where's the frick? Moreover, all exercises showed significantly greater EMG activity in the concentric phase than the eccentric phase for the evaluated muscles. Oh, brother. Um, something though, I will say interesting about the, the EMG, the eccentric and the concentric and all that. I just had a, um, I guess what you, I guess you would say a pencil neck in the comments the other day that they're like, but Eric, you want a horse cock weight, say you horse cock weight for 12 reps, but Dr. Mike says, but if you did it the slow controlled tempo, six reps, the time under tension would be the same. And I didn't bother responding because I don't care. I, I'm not, I don't give a rat's patoot. I don't give a rat's patoot, okay? Um, but I was thinking to myself in my head, because it really does. It throws me an inner, inner war with myself. Frank, it's, it's an idiot. It's like, brother, your time under tension horse shit, just because the time under tension, just because you're holding the bar in your hands the same, don't tell me that horse cocking something for 12 reps is the same as doing something like this for like six reps or something like that. Like, and this is the proof in the freaking pudding, okay? EMG activity significantly greater in the concentric phase versus the eccentric phase, okay? And which makes you're stronger. You're stronger in here. So when you're horsing the weight up, okay? It takes more freaking gusto. Do you know what I'm saying? Versus I could do a, like, oh my God. 
My thoughts are going a million miles per hour right now. I could do, I could do freaking um, 405. I could unwrap 405 on the bench and I could control it. You know what I'm saying? Like one banana, two banana, three banana, four banana, five banana, six banana, seven banana, eight banana, nine banana, 10 banana, 11 banana, 12 banana, 13 banana, 14 banana, 15 banana, 16 banana. You know what I mean? Say you get up to 20 bananas. Okay. What if I unwrapped it and I'm freaking pulsing the reps? How many bananas am I getting in there? It's going to be hard because I'm going to want to count the bananas with each rep. But say each rep takes like one banana, two banana, or not be the faster your horse cock it, So it's like one banana, two. So say each rep takes two bananas. I am getting 10 reps on 405. 10 reps on 405 ain't equal to a 20 second eccentric rep. Do you understand what I'm saying? So the argument that the time under tension is all that matters versus freaking horsing the weight versus like slow up, slow, you know what I'm saying? It ain't apples to apples. Don't ever tell me it's apples to apples. Anyways, I don't care. I just read that. That sentence got me fired up. Let's move it on. I don't even know what we're talking about here. Pull over, stimulates the pecs, yet Jeff doesn't like it. Jeff, that's the freaking real world for you, brother. Sometimes it doesn't have to feel good. You do it because you know you should. Now, if big Louis Ferrigno and Arnold are telling you pullovers are cash money, you freaking do them, okay? Now, I agree. I mean, I, I don't know. Maybe there's something, somebody said once back in the day that the pullover is like the squat of the upper body. Now, I don't know if I can agree with that. I mean, that's that seems a little you know, freaking far fetch, but it's like when you're doing, um, deadlifts, for instance, like think about how many muscle groups are working. Do you, can you like really isolate when you're horsing some weight or like squats? Are you, do you really feel your quads? Like, I guess some people are like, well, if I do the deep controlled slow, do you feel like you get a pump in your quads? Sure. If you're doing like 20 reps or something, but like, is this guy doing 20? I don't even know. I don't, I'm blowing the video right now. The video's getting blown because I'm so scatterbrained. Let's just move on. Well, the problem is, I simply don't feel my pecs when I do this movement whatsoever. And more or less, every client I've ever worked with says the same. And I don't seem... But then everybody in the golden age, which everyone always refers back to it, back then, you know what I mean? They had to train harder and stuff. The sups, the supplements. So it's like everyone's just picking, they're freaking cherry picking. You know what I'm saying? Any top bodybuilders putting these on their chest day. So despite some theoretical merit, I think pullovers are a much better lat exercise than a pec exercise. And for that reason, I'm gonna put them in D tier. D tier. Right, let's look at some better at the freaking the, the 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 classic, the golden classic bodybuilders will be absolutely livid right now. Exercises. The bench press. My ranking. I'm not gonna disagree with it though. Honestly, I I never do pullovers either. In fact, when I'm doing the Arnold program, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've been doing the Arnold program for like the past two months. And uh, you know, because the freaking workouts themselves take two and a half, three hours, I'll usually skip the pullovers because listen, he's got chest and back on the same day. You're doing bench, you're doing incline bench, you're doing dumbbell flies, you're doing dips, you're supposed to do pullovers, but then you're doing 80 reps total of pull-ups, you're doing bent over rows, you're doing T-bar rows, and then you're supposed to be doing like freaking, you know, eight ab exercises afterwards and calves and stuff too. So I'll be ax, you know, I don't, I don't really care for the pullover either, but I'm just saying. Might surprise you here. It offers high tension on the pecs as long as you bring the bar all the way down to your chest. It's very easy to overload and you can always add some weight over time as you get stronger. It feels good to me, although many people do complain that the bench press makes their shoulders feel a little cranky. I suspect that's because they're trying to lift more weight than they should be lifting. Thank you for being a buff Enough that I do count it as a slight negative. So if it were just me... Thank you for being my friend! Okay, he's S tier. Wow! Call me bamboozled. Now, I like that he's saying some people complain, and it's like these people just don't know how to bench, okay? Or they have some freaking minute injury that they need to treat and then before they get back to the bench. But listen, if this was anything but S tier, this video would just be the absolute just blasphemy of all things bulbous. 
bodybuilding. I credit most of my own pack development to this exercise. Thank you for leaving him off right here. Dumbbell won't allow the pecs to get in quite as deep of a stretch as dumbbells do, since it'll come up solid against your rib cage. And based on my coaching experience, not everyone gets as much pec activation into the bench press as I do. So for that reason, I'm gonna pause right there real fast, okay? Because listen here. I made a uh, Chris Bumstead looking at his video the other day. Really good, you know, we had a good discussion. We had a good talk, it was fun, you know. And then everything I liked, what I saw, you know, really put it over. So this is good stuff, Chris. This is good stuff. But he had some sort of symphonic background music. So freaking YouTube demonetized the video. So now I gotta really pick and choose my poison here. Because I don't know what kind of audio censorship they have going on now, but it's pretty goddamn strict. I'm gonna hesitantly drop it back. Oh, bastard! Bench press has all. Did he just he just dropped it for no reason? Just to appease the chicken the chicken leg pencil X? The same upsides as the flat bench press, except it slightly emphasizes the upper pecs. A lot of people think this means it isn't as good for the mid and lower pecs as the flat bench. However, a recent study found that the incline... Thank you for making my friend. I don't even know what he's going to say, but I will say this, that I feel like 10 years ago, I knew that the decline bench worked your upper pectorals just as much as like flat and stuff did too. Um, the reverse grip... Flat bench was like the ultimate upper pec developer. Uh, and now he's probably going to say that this incline actually works like the other, you know, the bottom pecs or whatever more. I don't know. It's just like this whole bro science of <clears throat> declines the bottom pec, flats like the middle girth, uppers the freaking clavicular and close grip sandwich press is the, you know what I mean? Like ultra, that's ultra bro science. Let's see what he says. Bench press caused the same lower and mid pack growth. Wow! What did I say? Just told you. Just told you. So, you know, <laughs> what does that say? It's just different strokes for different folks. What do I say all the time? Just find what you like to do and just do it. It doesn't matter what you do. It's the freaking gusto, the intensity of the cojones you bring to it. And if you horse cock shnikes with a lot of energy and you know, freaking intensity, like you're going to get gains and growth. You know what I'm saying? Like you can try to do the most, I guarantee, thank you, Jeff. Thank you for coming out with this and saying this, because I guarantee 95% of the pencil necked YouTube community would say, well, you got to do more incline chest to hit the upper pectorals. And I never do decline because I don't want to have a saggy bottom boob. You know what I'm saying? It's like, brother, you're a god dang imbecile. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> what are we doing here? Shit. Ah, S tier, but I think I'm going to leave it in A tier as well. Well, now, I saw that. Same okay. Lower and mid pack growth as the. This guy's just girthy uh, military jar, you know, just, just freaking. Um, what is the word I'm thinking of? Just like stout, just stout horse cock, huge jaw. The hell of a skeleton. Flat bench did plus better upper pec growth. So it's very close to S tier, but I think I'm gonna leave it in A tier as well. Why, Jeff? Why? Why you drop down the most basic muscle builders? Well, what's the point of that? I would love, I am itching, fiending to know what the S tier exercises are here. Is it gonna be the cable? It's gonna be like the cable crossover with a squeeze or something? The decline bench press doesn't have any long-term research comparing pet growth like the incline. All right, this is kind of, listen, I will, I am of, uh, I really like the decline because it takes your shoulders out of it a lot. So you can seriously horse cock. And obviously, because like, if you think about it, the range of motion, like, because at the angle, the range of motion is slightly smaller. Um, but because of the angle, it feels so much, it's, if you have any sort of tweaks or anything, bad shoulders, like this is the freaking go-to. This is a money movement and everyone scoffs at it. And I'm assuming he's gonna scoff at it too. The range of motion is not quite as high as the flat. Therefore, it's B tier. Guarantee it's, brother, if you make it C tier, <laughs> cause this sucker, dude, I've listened. You guys, if you guys have been following me for years, you know I've gone full freaking bat shit 
insano doing like high rep declines and stuff. That'll get you freaking sore as, um, it'll just get you freaking sore. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it also like, it's just such a great move. It just crushes your triceps too. Because you can horse cock way bigger weights. So you can handle big loads. Now he's going to say, it's about tries. It's about chest. <sighs> yeah. And flat bench. However, the biomechanics tells us that a decline angle should target the mid and lower pecs a bit more. Horse shit. It has two minor downsides. For one, in my experience, more people struggle with getting their upper pecs to grow than their mid to lower pecs. So if you're trying to shift the bias, I would shift it toward the upper pecs for most people. Second, Isn't he just saying, though, that like these, like the flat and the incline, like, I don't know. I mean, maybe this one, I guess, doesn't, I don't know. I have to go back and look at the research, okay? But I'm pretty sure, oh, I was going to look at my phone, but I'm using my phone to record right now. Anyways. I'll have to leave a comment in the comment section. I will leave a comment in the comment section, and if I am wrong, I will gladly accept it. And the decline bench does have slightly less range of motion than both the flat and the incline press. So, out of the three angle options, I would say it's my least favorite. I know some people swear by it, and it clearly is an effective chest builder. It's very close to being in A tier, but I'm gonna put it in B tier. Up what a surprise! The dumbbell press. This offers a deeper stretch on the pecs than the barbell, because Here's the funny thing about this, though, because, yes, theoretically, you can get a deeper stretch with the dumbbells. How many times – I'll raise my hand and say this. Not once do I ever go to the gym and see people getting a deeper stretch with the dumbbells because, for most part, people half – you know what I'm saying? Like, for whatever reason, people half rep the dumbbells, I think even more so than the barbells, or they're going till the rubber touches the chest or around so – so they're not getting the full range of motion either. I would, I would argue, listen here, I know theoretically you can get a deeper range of motion with the dumbbells. I would argue though that most people doing dumbbell presses with obviously freaking dumbbells aren't getting a, as big of a range of motion. Just from what I see. The dumbbells can move freely past them. When do you ever see people dumbbell press you like, out like this? You know what I mean? I don't know. Jeff, I, <laughs> I'm an open book, brother. Just fill me up. Rib cage. They feel great. You should get a great chest pump on these. And because people are less likely to let their ego take over on this exercise, it's less common for people to have shoulders. Less like, I mean, yeah, I guess they are less likely. I've seen some great egos on dumbbell. I've, I have seen some egos on dumbbell benching, though. But yeah, for the most part, probably people are going for broke on a uh, barbell bench more than dumbbells. But brother, I mean, you want to see some. Yeah. That's where the ultimate egos come out is on the dumbbell bench because you have. Then that's when you have the friends handing the dump, you know, and they be like, okay, I'm gonna hand you them the dumbbells, you know what I'm saying? Handing them the, the nope, and they gotta throw them down, and then the dumbbells are all crooked and bent. Issues. As a beginner and intermediate. Oh! Sh Frick! Wait! Oh, there's a study, fellas, that uh, that uh, garlic was proven to enhance muscle and increase fat loss. So check that out. It was like a 2023 study. I just reek of garlic pheromones right now, so I figured I'd shoot that at you, boys. God dang it. What is this freaking video? Continue watching. Thank you, my friend. I didn't watch any of these videos. What the hell are you talking about? Nippered. There we go. Chest! What are the best oh, yeah, chest yeah, exercises? Great. What are you doing to me? Pull over, bench press, incline, bench, decline, flat dumbbell. There we go. Let's get Using the weight of the dumbbells. However, oh. some overloading issues oh. in more advanced lift. Wait. Handle. So, while well, the flat dumbbell press is just about an S tier, it's getting knocked down to A tier. Jesus Christ! Overloading yeah. issues. How is the dot? Like, I would love to know what an S tier exercise is. I mean, again, what did I say before this video started? I said, since the dawn of man, all the freaking pros 
have been uh, hitting what? You know, dumbbell bench, barbell bench, uh, flies, and like the hammer strength pro you know, machines and stuff like that. But anyways, what is always the bread and butter go to? It's always the bench, you know. And sure enough, that somehow isn't S tier. Advanced lifter. The incline dumbbell press is also going in A tier, since it's the same basic movement with the same upsides and downside, except again, it has slightly more emphasis on the upper pecs. And I'm putting the decline dumbbell press in B tier, since I do find it awkward to set up. You'll probably need someone to hand you the dumbbells. And again, look. I do agree with that, but theoretically though, if you did have someone to hand you the dumbbells, you could get a bigger stretch. So that's on you, Jeff. But I will agree that it's, it would be hard for someone to, well, you have to have some serious, like, yeah, it would be hard. It would be hard. I can't argue with that. But if you could, imagine the good stretch you could get. Also, with these movements, you can always use the bench bar. You know what I mean? The cambered bench bar, which allows you to get deeper. So, really turn in the freaking, all these movements that theoretically should make them S tier. Now, maybe that is exactly where he, he's going. Our packs rarely need any extra emphasis. Okay, the machine chest press. A good chest press machine will give a net. Bro, if these get S tier though, I'm just like, uh, these are not, these are not as good as dumbbells and barbells. I promise you. Nice deep stretch on the pecs and provide high tension throughout the range of motion. Don't Unlike do it, Jeff. Dumbbells, don't do it, in, Jeff. Don't give this S tier. Come on. Connection with your pecs and give it a massive pump. Machines are very easy to it's overdo. Sounding, oh, it's massive, massive, awesome, massive. Oh, no. It's so sounding like an S tier. Some weight or a rep it's sounding like an S tier. The advantage of being a little safer to push to failure. Oh. Assuming you have a good chest press machine. Don't do it, Jeff. Boxes, I really can't think of a downside from a muscle building standpoint. So the machine chest oh, press is our first exercise. Got to get into the S <laughs> All right, dips. Let's see. Massive stretch oh on my abs. Possibly the. Let me also just say, I did not watch this video. I just I can see this shit coming from a mile away. Best comp. All right, what are we thinking about dips, fellas? Huge stretch, but he's gonna say it doesn't feel good to him or something. But I don't know. But he he goes off of him. Maybe it does feel good to him. He's gonna say it's hard to progress, probably. Probably gonna say injury to shoulders or something. I'm, I'm gonna say this is probably A tier, I would say. But I think this is a freaking absolute super exercise as well. I tell people all the time, man. Like, listen, you wanna get jack stacked, succulent, dense, hardened, and large? You gotta be freaking barbell bench or dumbbell bench or weighted dips. You know what I mean? Like, really, just, you know, the absolute bread and butter. Pound exercise I'm aware of for getting into a deep pec stretch. They offer high tension, and there's many ways to apply progressive overload. You can do assisted dips and reduce the assistance weight over time, or you can do body weight dips and add reps, or you can slow down the negative a bit more from week to week. And then as you gain more strength, you can use a weight belt to add external load. The only downside of dips is that some people find that their shoulders get cranked. Oh my God. I, <laughs> I, am, I, just, I can't miss with these videos. I just, I call it from a mile away if they do them too much, although I've never actually experienced that personally. But I will say, I don't think dips have the smoothest feel. So despite many upsides, oh, huh. they are taking That's you though, brother. Feels good department for me. That's you! Don't work. make a beat here. here. Okay, yeah, yeah, I told you. Hey. Definitely an exercise worth including though. Okay, what about push-ups? Body weight. Push-ups! Fellas, this is gonna be a long video, and I'm sorry that I go on tangents and scatterbrained, and you know, there's gonna be a lot of commercials probably, and but, uh, just see this as we're hanging out. You know what I mean? You're sitting on my couch right now. I'm teaching you a thing or two about horse cockery. You know what I mean? We're just having a good time. I sucked down six scoops of instant coffee. The heart rate's clicking and ticking on all cylinders. Um, and we're just having a good time, you know? So what do we think about push-ups? I think push-ups, obviously, um, They're cool, they're great, but like, yeah. Very difficult to progress with them. Uh, if you could progress with them, they would be an obvious no-brainer S tier, but you can't put, it's too hard to load them up. And I'll sit there and say, oh, do them in the pit shark or put a weight belt on you. And you know, it's like, that sounds like a lot of steps, okay? Where I could just load up a barbell, horse cock it, everyone's jaws drop to the floor as they go off at the top of the walk. You know what I'm saying? Whereas you have to push up and you have to have people put plates on your back and the plates are sliding off left or right. or You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, push ups, though, I will say this. Absolute best movement there is 
for when you're out and you have to get a quick pump, then what do you do? You just bang out the push-ups. Like that's, you know, I can't tell you how many push-ups I've done. Like when I was, uh, you know, I mean, just like through all the years of wrestling and stuff like that. And just to get warmed up or maybe get a little juicy pump going, you just bang out like, and it's like, man, especially when you have a time limit. So you got to be somewhere or whatever. You got to freaking whatever it is. You got to be somewhere. You got to do something. You got to be somewhere in, in three minutes and you don't, you want to get a pump. So what do you do? You know, the adrenaline's kicking in, the freaking mindset's ticking. I like, I have to hit this. And it's like, yeah, I don't want to stop. I got to get, I got to achieve that pump. And you hit like, you know, just an insane amount of reps. And it's just the next day you're like, God damn, I'm sore. Why am I sore? It's like, oh yeah, I did a set of a hundred pushups. You know what I mean? So you can't beat that. It's not like you can take a barbell somewhere and pump up with it. So absolute brilliant movement, but it's certainly not S tier because you can't freaking load that sucker. Push-ups are nice because you can do them anywhere without any equipment. Yeah. However, assuming you do have gym access, I think there are far better options for chest growth. The problem is that once you get decently strong, you'll need to do at least 30 plus reps to get close enough to failure to maximize muscle growth, which isn't ideal. I do think that's fine if you're doing them as a end of workout finisher, but otherwise doing all those reps can be exhausting for no added benefit. You'll also come up solid against the floor before your pecs are fully stretched and they're not that easy to overload. While you can have a partner add some weight to your back, the weight always feels a bit unstable for me. They are yeah. a decent beginner exercise, but I'm still putting bodyweight push-ups in C tier. Whoa, Banded push-ups do add some extra tension to the movement. However, almost all of that tension is added to the top half rather than the bottom half of the push-up. So tension still isn't being maximized while the pecs are stretched. I still think they're a decent finisher though, so I'll put them in B tier. Deficit push-ups fix the problem of not getting a deep stretch on the pecs, and even though they're still a bit tricky to overload, you can make the exercise more challenging by pausing for two to three seconds in the bottom. I think that if you're gonna do push-ups, this is how you should do them. Deficit push-ups are going in A tier. I used to do a lot of plyometric push-ups in my early powerlifting days oh, yeah. to build up explosive chest power for the bench press, but I've fallen out of love with them since. They're just not great for maximizing tension on the negative or in the stretch. And even though there is some research supporting more explosive training, I'd rather use an explosive temp. Tension on the negative. I don't know, but he's not looking at this like, he's just gonna have this too much like a <clears throat> cookie cutter bodybuilder. You know what I'm saying? Because the beauty of this movement, and I uh, I wasn't even thinking about the old clap push-up. The clap push-up's freaking awesome. <clears throat> because you're catching yourself. The amount of freaking strength that it takes, you know what I mean? Like, uh, the damage, you know what I mean? Think about, like, squat jumps and all that, right? It's not so much even just exploding, but it's the catching, that shock force, that shock trauma. So it's like, if anything, it just really boosts the intensity of the exercise, right? Because, of course, you have to explode through it, like, more motor unit recruitment, then you have to catch it, which uh, it's just very much more traumatic on the muscles, which is obviously what we want. So, yeah, I think the freaking, don't you be talking shit about the claps, Oh, on a weight-loaded exercise like the bench press, if bodybuilding is the goal. I'm going to put these in D tier. D? Why is that a D tier? Plus, you can do this anywhere. This, you need, what, six freaking, or four plates? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, damn, Jeff, I couldn't disagree anymore, man. This, I couldn't care less, or I couldn't care less about that, but this is just disgusting. That's a, that's a great, especially, that's a great warm-up when you're going to, for some serious horse cockery, just get the CNS fired up, you explode, you know what I mean? Explode, right? Then when you get on the bar, you fucking explode the bar. That's a that's a great, bro, I wouldn't, I don't care about that, but at least put all these C tier. This is not A tier. I, would, you know, I wasn't gonna say anything, but now I'm pissed. That is certainly not A tier. That's a stupid exercise. That's stupid. Chest builder. Speaking of less conventional exercises, the guillotine press is oh, basically yeah. a normal flat bench press, except you shrug your shoulders up, flare your elbows out, and lower the barbell down to your neck. A lot of people kick up a big fuss about this exercise causing shoulder issues, but there's no direct evidence or even strong rationale to support that. You can look Bro, that shit is gonna snap you up 100%, okay? Clearly you haven't done it enough. I remember the first time I did this, oh man, I really feel it a lot in my chest. And it's like, once you get to like, keep in mind, this is like, I was benching like 405 at the time. Once you get to 185, it's like, oh, I'm certainly going to tear something. 100%. Listen to Dr. Mike if you don't believe me. Some people will bench press guillotine style where they take a higher position on the chest and they let their elbows come. But that's not guillotine style. The whole point of a freaking guillotine is the guillotine cuts your head off. 
All right, let's get on the same page here. Is it guillotine or guillotine? It's French. French freaking head shop. You know what I'm saying? So above your nipples is not a guillotine press. That's just dumb bar path, right? Go in your neck. I think that's the freaking way that, you know, Vince Gironda or whatever was the one that, you know, coined that sucker. They feel a huge stretch in the pecs. Their shoulders feel amazing. No. Jeff, why are you showing this video? This doesn't even talk about the guillotine. Just because he said, like, a, it's not a guillotine press. Going to your neck is a guillotine press. No problem. Correct answer. Because it's a well, fucking guillotine. A little bit below. What does a guillotine do? Cuts your head and off. They will tuck their elbows on the way down. If that is what hits your pecs the most. Thank you, Bobby. I'm offering you. Yeah. Pecs and comfy and safe. Beautiful. Right answer. What I don't want you guys to get caught up in is people on the internet who say this is bad because biomechanics. I don't know why the fuck they say that because if you go out here, notice my pecs are getting more stretched as I pull. Yeah, but you're not going to horse cock the seat. You're going to be way more susceptible to injury if you're trying to actually push weight. Now, if you're lifting like a little puss, then yeah, then you probably can do that. If you have 95 pounds on the bar, you could probably press like this and oh, I feel it in my chest. You don't do that because, you're, you know what I mean? Like, the whole point you do this is for maximum horsepower to get your lats engaged in the press and stuff. So, listen, this is a two different worlds, brother. You know what I mean? You're crossing the line with saying that you should press like that, in my opinion. Because, listen, <laughs> yes, this video is for people with want big, bulbous pectorals. I get that. But the most common question in the gym is how much do you bench? And people aren't just, for the most part, everyone benching is going to try to horse cock big bench presses. So when you're saying it's totally fine to press like this, when they're going in there with a big, huge, freaking, you know, bulbous ego, they're definitely going to hurt their shoulder at some point, without a doubt, right? <sighs> and, then, and they're just getting weak. You don't get super strong benching like that. You know what I mean? It's like once you learn to, like, you know, freaking use your lats and boom, boom. You know what I'm saying? Said, I do believe that for some people, especially those Anyways. who are pre-existing. Yeah. All right, we're moving on. Shoulder issues, flaring the elbows. Thank you for being my friend. friend. Just wouldn't bother with these. However, guillotine presses will stretch the pecs better than any of the other barbell presses we've discussed. And it also has a cool history in lift. <sighs> who cares about the fucking history? Jesus. Anyways, I would do that as a warm up. I'm not even saying that you shouldn't. That's exactly what I do. I always warm up with an empty bar. Right, and then you go to like even 95 pounds. So put a 25 on, then put a 45 on, then a 45 and a 25, and then two 45s, and then two 45s and a 25. You know what I mean? Very slow, progressive warm ups. And when you warm up, you know, you hang out, you let it stretch out, you press it a few times, right? You can change the bar path, you know, just get everything just feeling loose as a goose, right? But certainly don't try to horse cock weights with a fucking guillotine press. Come on. In culture. I am a fan, and I would put it in A tier. However, because it's potentially very dangerous, dropping the bar. Brother, I was gonna say, if you put that higher than just a classic bench press, I don't even know, we just totally lost the plot on what lifting even is. Right, your neck would be lights out. I'm gonna go ahead and put it in F tier. What? <laughs> he said he was gonna put it in the, what did he say, A tier or something? But instead he put it in F tier. Wow. So because some, what did he say? Let me, I don't watch this. Don't think the potential. I am a fan and I would put it in A tier. I am a fan, but, and I would put it in A tier. However, because it's potentially very dangerous, dropping the bar on your neck would be lights up. Dropping the bar on your neck. Okay, well, first and foremost, don't have a dead fish loose as a goose grip. Actually has some grip strength, which is why I recommend that when you're doing like, Body weight pull-ups and stuff. Don't use the freaking straps. Develop your grip strength. It's only going to improve the strength in every other facet of lifting. And uh, always use the safeties. You know what I'm saying? You should never... You can't downgrade something because of some theory that... Some theoretical... Theoretically, I could drop this on my neck and kill myself. You could do that with any bench press. Why is the bench press A tier? Because you could also press it and when you go to rack it it can slip out of your hands too and, cr and kill you as well that's the that's the dumbest thing i've ever heard i would give it a tier but because of that uh, so use safeties okay that's like the moral of it it's like if you're ever lifting heavy i know like some most gyms like the bench presses don't have the safeties 
which I just, I think is stupid. I think they got to change that because you've already seen enough clips online where people are horse cocking a big bench and it slips out and like, you know what I mean? Crushes their chest. So you see it online. It means it's happening more than you see it online. Obviously, those are just the ones that people caught on camera. Probably because it's like, oh, this is a big, this guy's going to absolutely horse this weight. Let's film it. And then he drops it. But that means that, you know, 10 times the amount of people are dropping it, not on camera, at least. Um, does that mean you shouldn't do the bench? No, but you got to have, you know, safety. Like, first and foremost, have some grip strength. You know what I mean? Don't use a bench bar, right? Don't use a bent bar. Always make sure your bar is straight, right? Doesn't, like, have a weird roll because it's bent from some horse cock bending it. Um, yeah, just have some safeties in place. And then you can go as heavy as you want. You can do whatever you want. Yeah, anyways. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and put it in F tier. I just don't think the potential hazard. Imagine is. that. Imagine like a teacher grading a paper. It's like, I was going to give it an A. It was pretty good. I really liked it. I was going to give it an A. But because of this one thing, I give it an F. Is worth any potential marginal gains you'll get from it. That said, if you modify the exercise to do the same basic movement with dumbbells, it suddenly becomes much safer. Mm. And in that case, I am going to put these in A tier. Again, these may fall in D tier or F tier for those of you who get shoulder pain from it. But in my experience, the majority of lifters can flare their elbows without issue to start light and build up your tolerance. To round out the dumbbell press variations, I guess I'll cover the one-arm dumbbell press. I still see this quite a bit at the gym, but doing one arm at a time has no advantage because each pec has to work individually in a dumbbell press anyway. So doing them. Well, let me say this real fast. I don't know. I'm not acting to be like some science guru. I'm not a know-it-all. Again, I'm just giving my opinion. Don't crucify me. But when you do the single arm stuff, it's like you have a better like neural drive in my understanding, you know what I mean? That's why you can do like, you can one arm row more than you can do a two arm row. And people say, oh, but your back's not involved as much or you can post or whatever, okay. Well still, you can probably like curl, one arm curl more than you can like two, you know what I'm saying? Like it's just being able to isolate like one limb, I feel like you can get a better like signal, uh, just a bit more strength. And because of this, you can kind of like, I don't know, you can kind of change your body position up a little, a little bit. So I do personally think you can horse cock a little bit more weight on the one arm than you could doing two. I'm not saying I hardly ever do one arm, but in my experience, I could bench more weight. Like if I had bigger dumbbells and I get one arm, I could probably press for like another, an extra rep or a few more pounds if I was doing the one arm versus the simultaneous two arms. So in that case, it's like, well, you can maybe get a bit more intensity, but is that because the leverages are easy or, you know what I'm saying? The signal, the, the nervous system's a bit stronger in that position. I don't, you know what I mean? You get know what I'm saying? So I definitely think there's a, there might be a place for it, but I definitely wouldn't say it's the same exact, it's most certainly not the same thing as doing two. One at a time just makes it harder to keep your balance, which disperses tension away from the pecs. Maybe a bit harsh, but I'm going to put these in F tier. Jesus Christ, that's, that is extremely harsh. How, I mean, I don't know. The Smith machine gets a lot of hate for some reason. Yeah, it's just bullshit. It's this fixed bar path. But I guess, like, for bodybuilders, okay, they don't care about the strength, the functionality. I was going to say the one arm press is a bit more athletic as well, but athleticism doesn't matter. Nothing matters in this world other than just, you know, all, all show, no go, basically. I guess that's the, the day and age we live in. But studies consistently show that it is effective at building muscle across a variety of different exercises. I think it's a great alternative to the standard bench press with all the same upsides. Plus, I find I'm more confident pushing the Smith machine press closer to failure. These are going in A tier along with the other barbell presses. And the incline Smith machine press is the same basic movement, except with a little more upper pec emphasis. So the funny thing about the Smith machine, people are like, oh, it's so much safer and all that. Like with bars and all that, if you can dump them, like especially if you're doing an incline, you know what I mean? Like you can just slap it, get you know what I mean, if you fail. Like with this shit, you're gonna be pinned under it. Not theoretically, you can try the racket, I guess. So it's just like how many videos do you see of people failing on squats, getting crushed to death? Like people like literally die when they fail on the Smith machine versus a free weight they can dump it or something. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, I'm not against the Smith machine either. Like I, I've used it from time to time. Again, it always ends up giving me tendonitis or something because it's so just unnatural. And, uh, and it's always like, why am I doing this? 
when I can do this exact same movement with a free weight, which throughout the dawn of man, everyone says the free weights are better than the Smith machines for strength, you know, and kind of more, the stronger you get, the bigger theoretically you should get. They're also going in A tier. Okay, so far we've been discussing only compound chest exercises. Presses, dips, and push-up variations that'll smash the pecs, Ooh. but also target the front delts and triceps. Sometimes you want to isolate the pecs, and for that, we've got a bunch of pec fly variations. There's cable crossovers, Here we go cable now. pec flies, the pec deck Here come the S tier exercises. Flies. Let's start with cable crossovers. These do provide a big stretch on the pecs with nice... I will say, if any of these get ranked higher than the bench, it's like, what the fuck are we doing? Because I think... Everyone will agree that like benching is the best, the best like pure size builder, and this stuff. Everyone for the dawn of man has been saying that this is like just the icing on the cake movement. See what I mean? Like the accessories. Nobody looks at these as the prime movements. Smooth and even tension throughout the range of motion. And I'm not against me, and usually give me a solid chest. I'll, sometimes I'll finish with progressive like overload, cable crossovers. Or... Simply because you can't go as heavy, but you can still add a rep here and there and focus on technique, so that's not a deal breaker. The only downside to these is that by doing them standing, you may find that the cable pulls your body back, especially as you get stronger, which can make it less stable. You can correct for this by bending forward and flying downward, so while it's close to being perfect, it's not the most stable fly variation. And for that reason, I'm putting it in A tier. The seated pack fly has all the same upsides as the cable crossover, but by sitting down, you get rid of the balancing component and increase the stability of the exercise, which will make sure that all the tension coming from the cables is being applied directly to the pecs. This is my favorite chest isolation movement at the moment, and so I'm gonna make it my second addition to S tier. I, I, did I not tell you this was going to happen at the beginning? His S tier is a fucking machine press and then a seated cable fly. Which again, I'm not even against. I'm just saying. You have all these classics. Dumbbell bench, barbell incline bench. You know what I mean? Like even the push-ups and stuff. Everything's just like... Then you have the... You know, I don't know. What do I know? This video probably has 7 trillion views in 3 hours, so clearly he's doing better than me. The Pec Deck machine shares many of the same benefits as you're also seated, so it's nice and stable, and you'll be able to get it. You know what's funny about this, though? I've, uh, very rarely do I ever get, like, injured, other than my knees exploding a couple times in my life. But, like, in terms of shoulders and packs and buys, and I don't really ever get injured. Um, I've snapped my shoulder up twice on this machine. So the fact that he's like, oh, I'm like, this is, because theoretically you could get injured. It's like, dude, you can get injured doing any of this stuff. And in fact, this, this fixed machine that you do, like that, this is like public enemy number one for me. Yeah, but I bet this will be like S tier too. Big stretch on your pecs. Well, because he doesn't he get hurt. Feels and that's all that matters. As the cables do. The machine locks you into a very specific movement pattern, <sighs> whereas the cables allow your shoulder to move a bit more freely. Oh, yeah, so this means you may not be able to find that perfect line of pull for your pecs specifically. This is a pretty subjective one, but I'm going to put the pec deck machine in A here. All right, the dumbbell fly. Now, a couple years ago... I will say this. I don't know. He's probably going to give this a very low score. I will say this. Um, also, do you guys ever find it funny that like now the length and partials are such a hot thing? When even just, I would say a year ago, like I, the amount of comments I've gotten from people saying like, so for instance, on like the pull-ups, it's like, you're not even doing the most beneficial part. The squeeze at the top is eagle lifting. You're not even, you got to squeeze at the top. That's the most hypertrophic motion of the movement. You know what I mean? And now it's like, oh, boy, part, long length partials. Well, anyways, I will say this, um, the dumbbell fly. I never really gave it a go because for the longest time, I probably, cause I probably tried them a lot when I was a kid because I did the Arnold program as a kid and there was always flies in there and uh, yeah, dumbbell fly, you know, the real way you're supposed to do flies. And I was always like, well, I don't really feel anything in my chest up here. You know what I mean? But it's like the big stretch, the big range of motion. If you just go, I've gone up to the 105s already and just pulsing it here. And every time ever I do the dumbbell flies, I get more sore than anything else, okay? So just here, and it feels totally safe too, all right? As long as you like know how to like kind of get your back engaged and everything, kind of just like bench pressing. If you were like loosey-goosey and then 
you know, flying with that form, you probably would hurt your shoulders. But if you like, when you set the dumbbells up and kind of like pack your shoulders back, get your lats engaged, and then go down and stretch and just go to like here, don't come up. Cause I feel like if you go all the way up you kind of lose that back tightness. So it's just like here, I'm always like so sore the next day. And I went from, I would back even a year ago, that was a total F tier exercise. I never do this. Uh, and now I think this is an absolute between, I, I think dumbbell flies one of the freaking best now because you soar every time and you can manhandle some pretty big weights if you get comfortable with it, kind of know how to engage your back. So in my opinion, obviously the bench variations, weighted dips, dumbbell flies, you freaking money. That's it. You know? I probably would have put this one in C tier. Huh. Get literally zero tension at the top of the range of motion. Who cares about the top of the range? You are the freaking, you are the one saying the stretch is the most important part. Right? Who cares about the top? Who cares? These are all tools, fellas. I mean, if you really care about the squeeze at the top, you could do these suckers, you can go heavy, you can stretch those suckers up, then you go to your stupid ass cables so you could squeeze. You could squeeze, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like baking a cake, you know what I mean? Pick the ingredients that make the most delicious cake. Each ingredient doesn't have to be the, you know, like the most delicious ingredient in the world. Salt is not delicious on its own, but when you combine it with the other ingredients, it's like, God damn, that's good, you know what I mean? When the pecs are most contracted. <sighs> However, recent evidence has shown that the contraction is most likely not as important as See, this is, this is so funny because he's like, I don't give, what did he say? He put an F tier or something because there's no, there's no tension at the top. But however, this study came up. He's like, why do you put so much stock in the study anyways? Do it for yourself. Try it out. See how it feels. Do it different ways. If you don't feel tension at the top, it's like, okay, what if I just kind of hang out in the stretch? How does that feel? Come up with your own freaking solutions or come up with your own conclusions. Don't set like this is. Oh, I don't like this exercise, but because Brad J. Schoenfeld likes it, I do like it now, and I give it A+. Plus. The stretch is for- Have your own opinion, brother. Fly back up as a viable option. I like to do these all as lengthened partials, so I just cut out the top half of the movement altogether where there's no tension anyway. Well, that's exactly what I was just saying, so, yeah. It's a freaking great movement. I still don't think they're quite as smooth as cable flies, and so they're losing one point in the feels good department. I'm putting dumbbell flies in A tier. Okay, let's finish off. All the shit that feels good is the stuff that everybody does at the gym, the stuff that gets you like no gains for the most part. Yeah, the cables feel good. Nobody gets massive on the cables. You know, I thought we knew this. You know what I mean? Like you can go to the cables, look at all the newbies that go to the cables. Like, oh, I really like this machine, it feels good. Meanwhile, it's like, yeah, you're not going to the gym because it all feels so good. Oh my God, that feels so good. Oh my God. No, you're going to the gym because you want to get strong as shit. You want to become a horse cock. You want to, you know what I mean? Be a freaking iron ox. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, some stuff doesn't feel good. That's good. You know, it builds toughness. Learn to embrace this. You think 20 rep squats feel good? He would probably give 20 rep squats an F. I put 20 rep squats in the F minus, the pits of hell, because it feels so bad. Meanwhile, it's like, that was like the ultra mass builder program back in the day, which you can't, listen, who cares if it does or doesn't? You can't refute though that that freaking mental toughness will take you so far in your journey of lifting. Not just with getting stronger, but obviously size too. You learn how to embrace like discomfort. And when you learn how to be comfortable being uncomfortable, that's how you can push through. Like a lot of people are like, oh, I'm exhausted. I'm done. You know what I mean? Other the psychos like, oh my God, I'm exhausted. I'm just force on the Tom Platts of this world is sick in the head. Yeah. Who's going to go farther in the game? The people are like, oh, I'm done. I'm mechanical failure. You know what I mean? Or the sickos, the sickos that just can't stop. They're just salivating over more reps, you know? Oh. With three less common exercises one that I hate, one that I love, and one that's just oh. okay. The cable press around is probably the, the only fuck exercise is the in the cable so press around that gets the pec fully contracted. That's yeah, the press around. Is that. I knew there was going to be some. I told you guys. I said there's probably going to be a half kneeling cable twist. Sure enough, a half freaking, you know, supported kneel or half um, split stance cable press around. 
what the hell? Dude, is this a, is this, is this a scheme to sell programs? I bet you, these, all these exercises you do, they get C tier, but some of these that you haven't heard of are actually S tier. Find out more in my program. It's a rare exercise where you press the cable across your midline. So I do like to include it periodically for this reason, <clears throat> because even though the stretch literature is convincing to me, I still think including some short length bias work isn't a bad idea until we get Brother, that looks like Some such people a waste do find the movement to be a bit awkward at first. You're telling me, the hang of it, you're it's telling awesome. me that a single arm dumbbell press is a bullshit exercise, but this is good? Really is a great option. I love the press around and it's going in A tier. The okay. cross body standing Thank you for the animal frame. Some people do find the movement to be a bit awkward at first, but once you get the hang of it, it really is a great option. I Thank you for the animal friend. Oh. Single arm dumbbell bench. F. Single arm dumbbell bench. F. Single arm cable split stance push. A. Get the hell out of it. here. The crossbody standing Get the fuck. Oh, this is another terrible. Exercise okay. you extend your arm. He said one. Okay, this is terrible. This is not going to be. Literally, this is just work your shoulders. This is not going to be anything for your chest. Across your body to get the upper pecs fully contracted. But unlike the cable press around, the dumbbell offers literally zero tension when the pec is stretched. This is also basically a front raise, meaning the front delts will steal a lot of the tension from the pecs, even if you squeeze them at the top. Doing dumbbell flies lying down makes a lot more sense biomechanically. So these are going in mm. half tier. The floor press is mainly sure. used for developing maximum. That was a good. That was a good. Put that in the F. That's the stoop. That's the dumbest shit. I love when I see people at the gym doing like they're like you know what I mean. They're doing like trying to squeeze. Like you, you might you would probably get more stimulus in your chest if you just put the dumbbells down and just did this. Because really, you know what I mean. You're not getting any tension from the dumbbells itself. You're probably getting a nice like. Static contraction of the bicep, hitting those delts, getting those delts juicy. But the pecs, brother, get out of here. And it's floor press. This is like a strength builder. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll understand if this is an AT. You know, you're not going to stretch, although you still can horse some serious weight. It's probably more weight than you can on the split stance, half kneeling cable push that he gave A tier. On bench press strength, and it's an exercise that I include in a lot of my strength and power building programs as I think it's great for smashing the triceps and improving lockout strength. That said, the limited range of motion makes it a less than ideal candidate for chest hypertrophy as you never get the pecs fully stretched. So even though I do love it for strength, it's just okay for pec growth, and I'm going to leave it in C tier. Now, if I had to crown just one exercise as the best of the best, I'd probably go with a machine chest prep. This is the best dude. It's, a, you know what I mean? It's like an accessory. Like, there's no way, man. Look at when Arnold went back to the 1980s, like Mr. Olympia or whatever. And like the machine, there were like new machines out he was using and stuff. And all people are going to be like, oh, he was off the gas. He wasn't his, or whatever, whatever bullshit people are going to come up with. But from what you can see in his training, he was using like more Smith machines and machines and stuff. And he just wasn't nearly as massive. You know what I mean? Like these machines are not going to get you jack stacked, thick and rotund. Absolutely not. They're good like pump. Get a good pump. Like get a good finisher. But there's. Anyways, I'm just like old man Del Hagen yelling at the sky here. People are like, oh, you're an idiot. Who cares about strength? The machine puts you in optimal stretch. It's safe. Meanwhile, go watch any like bodybuilder, because this is about bodybuilding. It's about putting girth and size. Like, go watch any bodybuilders like training, VHS or whatever. They're all on YouTube. You can find them all. Ronnie, Jay, uh, Kevin, Lavroni, you know what I'm saying? All those guys. Gunther Schreinkamp. All those dudes. They all bench, you know what I mean? And they all bench first. And that can't be a coincidence. This is a broad category, and some machines are certainly better than others. But yeah, if you can I owned this. This machine sucks. It does not feel good. And if you're talking about injury, if you're talking about injury, like these machines, and my wife always tells me too, I'm like, do you want to just like finish one of these? She's like, I don't like the machines. They always just hurt me. Because yeah, it's just like these, well, at least with free weights, you can move them in a way you want to move them. You know what I mean? Especially like dumbbells and stuff. You can rotate it however feels good for you. 
but like these things, like you're just stuck in one press and all it takes is like one set or you're in this, uh, you're moving in a way that's like funky to you. All it takes is one set and you're just, you're donezo. You know what I mean? Like snap. Now the serious injury, but listen, when you tweak something, shit takes like three months to heal usually. Tell me you're going to get stacked jacks, suckling and dense three months having some sort of, you know, shoulder impingement or tendonitis or something, you know? You won't, you won't get gains. Trust me on that. And it feels good. At and I'm not things. against it. I'm not saying don't do it, but don't put so much stock into it. Please. I definitely think it's worth including. It takes all the regular boxes and you can safely push it to failure. <sighs> and if I had to pick one exercise as the worst of the worst, it'd probably be... The funny thing about that, is, and you can safely push... Dude, you can push all this shit to failure. Just use safeties. Even dumbbells. You can't do another rep. Just If you have to, just drop them. You know what I mean? But more than anything, it's like this whole benching thing. Like, oh man, the bench is dangerous. Like you... You know, slips out, it can crush you or whatever. Use the safeties. You know what I mean? Like, or I know a lot of gyms, they don't have them, but every gym has a power rack and stuff. So if you want to bench heavy and it's a concern, just bench in the power rack, right? Or like, um, I would, you don't, you don't have to have a spotter. I get it. I don't, I don't like having a spotter either. I would never say that, but there's ways you can do it where you can fail. You know what I mean? Like I've seen plenty of videos where people, where they fail and they just like sit up. You know what I mean? It's not that, unless you drop it on your neck, but who's benching like, of course, don't go heavy with the guillotine press, you know? But for the most part, I said once, twice, now twice, use the freaking safeties. It's that simple. You can push anything to failure then. The late press, this is just one of those exercises that influencers do to be different. Stupid. But Absolutely stupid. It comes with a ton of downsides and no real upside. Also, I just launched phase two of my pure bodybuilding program over on jeffnipper.com. So that's available for pre-order right now. Phase one of the program got the highest praise I've ever received from a whole bunch of experts in the field. And I've got a long list of amazing... Surely these aren't his friends. In testimonials from people who ran the program. Phase two builds on that by introducing more than 90 new exercises and plenty new intensity. Shrugs with straps of one plate, brother. This is why you're dropping your bench press. You're shrugging one plate with straps. Dude, I can just look at this. It's like you're, you're 15 pound curls. Techniques, many of which I've never shown here on the channel before. If you pre-order, you'll get all three of these. I don't know, I'm sorry. This is the program for the price of one. So you'll get the push-pull legs. Thank you for being my and friend. And six months of training. In he looks jacked there. I'll give him that. I don't know what the hell he's wearing. It almost looks like he's wearing like one of those cotton singlets. He's got the chest hair busting up, veins protruding, belts popping. Got the big freaking tube socks on. Oh, and the pre-order lasts for one week. If you didn't run phase one yet, I would recommend starting with that one first. And just for this week only, I'm also going to knock phase one off by 30%. Oh, now might be the time to pick up both, as this is the most discounted they'll ever be. So I'll put a link to the new program over here. He will never give you this good of a deal again. He will never give you this good of a deal. You got to buy it now. Buy now, buy now, buy now! To my head if you want to check it out. And there'll also be links to both phases in the description box down below as well. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a thumbs up. If you thank you for video. making my so, friend. friend. Yeah. Okay, fellas, that was a 15 minute video. It took one hour and eight minutes to analyze. Uh, listen, I don't, I don't wanna be harsh. You know what I'm saying? I hope I didn't come across as harsh. Some stuff that he says just really infuriates me. Infuri infuriates me, it infuriates me. Uh, but that's just because I just adore lifting weights and horse cock and big barbells. You know what I'm saying? So when you're telling me that it's not good and instead you should do this bullshit cable split stance push, it just bamboozles me and it screams like bullshit. But other than that, I mean, I, I agree with some of the stuff and I don't know. Maybe I should, I don't know, whatever. Anyways, until next time, boys, this video is way too long.